Hello, it's Tim Harnish here. In my last film, I looked at Twickenham Embankment, the oldest part of Twickenham next to the Thames. In this film, I'm continuing along the riverside to look at uh, the riverside. This is the beginning of another historic part of Twickenham that starts with a slipway between Champions Wharf and the Embankment and continues east until it becomes Orleans Road. This represents a border between the working part of the town that was once inhabited by fishermen and the hailers who pulled barges and the more upper class residential area. In the 18th and 19th centuries, Twickenham attracted many artists and writers, including J.M.W. Turner, Horace Walpole and Alexander Pope. At the start of the riverside at the end of Church Lane is the Champions Wharf Play Beach and Sculpture Park. The play beach is a splendid sand pit for children which is furnished with a model Viking longboat and a ferryman skiff. No doubt Vikings rode past here in the year 871 on their way to raid Chertsey Abbey which is just a few miles up the Thames. Nearby is an urn commemorating Twickenham's greatest literary resident Alexander Pope who is buried nearby in St Mary's Church. He was one of the greatest poets of the 18th century his most celebrated work being The Rape of the Lock, which is a poem about the theft of a lock of hair. I thought I didn't know anything about Alexander Pope until I read all the quotations on benches around the urn, including Who breaks a butterfly on the wheel? Fools rush in where angels fear to tread. To err is human, to forgive divine, and Eternal sunshine of the spotless mind, which I thought was simply a strange film starring Jim Carrey and Kate Winslet, but that just shows what a pleb I am. An arch gate leads to a balustraded walkway along the river and into part of York House Gardens. Then quite suddenly around a corner there are these marvellous statues. These beauties are probably water nymphs, but are known locally as the Naked Ladies. They even have a beer named after them by the local Twickenham Brewery, which is always fun to ask for in a pub. They were imported from Italy by a dodgy financier who was convicted in 1904 and were bought by the last private owner of York House, Sir Ratan Tata, who was a member of the Tata Industrial Family, which is still one of the biggest companies in India. These formal gardens are a lovely place to read a book in the summer and usually have lots of small children running around, but on a cold day in late December they are not quite so inviting. An arched bridge crosses Riverside Road beneath into the main part of York House Gardens. York House was built in the 1630s and was named after the York family who were past owners of Twickenham Manor. It had numerous upper class owners including Andrew Pitcairn who was groomed to the bedchamber of Charles I and the Austrian ambassador Count Starenberg. In the early 19th century Twickenham hosted three French princes who had taken refuge in England. The oldest prince, Louis Philippe, became King of the French and three of his sons lived in Twickenham in the 1860s. One of the sons, the Comte de Paris, lived in York House. His only son, the Duc d'Orléans, bought York House in 1896, extended it and gave it a French look with shutters and fleur-de-lis decoration. In the gardens he installed a Parisian style pissoir for when he was caught short while playing tennis. It's still functional but a little whiffy. You can also get married in York House as you can see by all the confetti. As well as the formal gardens, there is also a woodland area with some ornamental ponds and sculptures. It's all rather lovely. Back on the riverside, after our excursion to York House, we reach a bit of the foreshore known half-jokingly as Twickenham Beach. Today it is a cold, muddy slope down to the river, but in the summer it is packed with kayakers paddle boarders and children swimming. I've rode down here several times in a skiff for a pint at the White Swan which has been serving locals since at least 1714. The Thames is tidal here so there's a good chance you might get your feet wet when you're having a nice beer in the garden. 
There are several lovely Georgian houses on this part of the riverside, including Ferry House, a very substantial property overlooking the site of the original Twickenham Ferry. This was probably set up in about 1640 as a connection with Ham House on the other side of the river by William Murray, the first Earl of Dysart, who was Charles I's whipping boy. Murray was educated alongside Charles, and when Charles was naughty, it was Murray that got whipped. The Dysart Ferry closed in 1970 after having given over 300 years of service. If you walk back along Riverside towards the embankment, you will see Dial House. This red brick house was built in about 1722 and until 1889 was owned by the Twining family, who were and still are tea merchants. Their shop on the Strand has been there for over 300 years. Thomas Twining I had the house built and lived there until his death in 1741. He is buried in St Mary's Church, which is conveniently next door to Dial House. The sundial on the front of the house carries the date 1726, possibly commemorating its completion. The house is now owned by the Bishop of Kensington. I hope you've enjoyed our jaunt along the riverside, which packs a lot of history into a short distance.